Hello everybody. With the release of version 2 of my ribbon tool, I thought I would include a short video showing you how to use it. It's getting quite big and complicated now, so I hope this short tutorial will help you get the best out of it. If you don't have this script yet, you can download it as part of the rewards if you're an Ant CGI Club member. Or it's available, like many of my other scripts and assets, from my CubeBrush, Coffee, Gumroad and ArtStation stores. So here we have the main UI. Once you've downloaded and put the scripts into the appropriate scripts folder, you just need to create an extra button on your shelf with this code. You can then easily open the tool whenever you need to, like this. The window is split into four sections. Up here we have a general overview of what's new and some of the updates I have planned in the future. Next is the global settings section. This will affect any ribbon you create. Here is where you can generate a ribbon based on a model surface. This is good if you're creating a facial rig for example and you want the ribbons to follow the actual muscle structure. It could also be useful for creating ribbons around the eyelids or even around the mouth. And here at the bottom you have the custom ribbon section and this is what we will look at first. If I click the build custom ribbon button we get a basic ribbon with five joints. We can select the ribbon and move it and the joints follow. Over here you can see all the follicles and joints used which is a standard ribbon setup. Let's look at some of the options. We can change the direction the ribbon is created in. So vertical is good for legs, but we can change this to horizontal to create a ribbon more suited to an arm rig, for example, like this. Mid joints will change how many joints are placed between the main three. Imagine an arm with a shoulder, elbow and wrist. These mid joints are placed between those. If I change this to two, you can see we now have two joints between the main ones. Let's increase that to three. So as you can see, we now have even more joints. Let's set that back to one. The length simply changes how long the ribbon is. The width is calculated automatically. If I double it, the ribbon is much bigger. Up here in the global area you can specify a name for the ribbon and all its associated systems. Let's change that to temp name and the global scale affects the overall size of the ribbon, its joints and controls. How about we reduce that to one? If I build this ribbon, you can see it's tiny now. Let's set that back to 10. And you can see the ribbon is also using the specified name. And so are the systems. There's another option here, matrix ribbon. Now depending on what version of Maya you're using, you may not have access to this option. It will only work with Maya 2020 or higher. All this will do is build the ribbon using the new matrix nodes instead of follicles, which is a much more efficient way to construct them. If I build another ribbon now, you see we don't have any follicles. Instead, we have the matrix node here. So that's just another option for you. You can also add some simple controls to your ribbon with this checkbox. If I build this version, we have three controls and these are meant to represent the three joints in an arm or leg. So you can essentially make your driver joints move these controls. So this is still a matrix based ribbon. If I disable that and rebuild, we have the traditional follicle version again. You'll notice that there are more options down here. 
Joint orient is an important one, but we need some joints to work with. Here we have a basic biped leg. Don't worry, I'm going to supply this file with the tool so you can experiment with it and see what orientations work best for you. This setup is using X as a primary axis, so that's the one which points down the joint. If we set joint orient to match this, so X, as we are working on legs, let's change the direction back to vertical too. If I also turn off add controls, you will see that snap to joints is now disabled. This is because you can only use this option if you're adding controls, because it will snap the controls to the joints for you. Let's turn that on too. We need the root of the leg selected. And let's build the ribbon. So what that's done is build a ribbon using joints and controls that will attempt to match the main leg joints. It then snaps the key controls into position. You will see that the ribbon is quite soft and this is because it has basic weighting applied. I will add in some automatic weighting in a future version, but for now you will need to go in and adjust the weights on the ribbon yourself so it matches more closely with the leg. I will be demonstrating this process in a future video. If I select this and build the ribbon again, you will see that there are some extra isopalms here. This will allow you to get a more angled joint as you adjust the weights. Again, I will be demonstrating this in more detail in a future video. Okay, so what about the opposite leg? Actually, let's undo this one and give it a proper name. Left biped. And rebuild it. So for the opposite side, you will see that the orientations are different and X is pointing away from the next joint. In this instance, we just enable invert, which will flip the orientations on the ribbon for us. I'll update the name to right too. And build it. So there we go, all done. What you can do is use the main joints to drive these controls so the leg deforms the ribbon, which then moves your model. Like I said earlier, the weights do need updating manually, but I will cover that in a future video, plus I will update the script for you as well. So that's a biped limb, but what about a quadruped limb? Well, this is just as easy. First, disable invert, and let's update the name. All we need to do is enable three joint limb to tell the tool we are working with a different type of leg. Okay, let's build that. Okay, good. And we have the creases at the main joints. Let's do the other side now. Ah, I forgot to rename this side to left. Never mind, you get the idea. I'll call the new one left just to confuse things. It doesn't really matter just for this demonstration. And enable invert. So there we go. Ribbons and controls created for two biped limbs and two quadruped limbs. I'll undo those. So that's one orientation. So let's look at another one. So this time we have Y pointing down the bone instead. All we do is change joint orient to Y. We aren't working on a three joint limb, so we can disable this. And let's update the name. Okay, let's build. Ah, so this is what happens when you forget to disable invert. Okay, let's redo that. That's better, and it matches the orientation. So now we need invert to work on the opposite side. Okay, fell for one of my own errors. This is just here to remind us that we have to update the name, because one already exists with this name in the scene. There we go, a different leg setup, but it still works. Let's look at one more. 
This time we have Z pointing down the joint. So change joint orient to Z, turn off invert and update the name. Now do the opposite side, enable invert. Ah, need to update the name. Okay, that's better. So what I would say is if you intend on using this tool in this way, it's recommended that you adopt one of these joint orientations. You can always check out the supplied file that comes with this tool just to see how these joints are set up. There's one more option to look at. With some rigs, you want the ankle or wrists to be aligned with the world orientation. This makes animation easier and means your controls are less likely to flip. You can see it here in this example. In this instance, all we need to do is enable Reset End Joint. If I build that now, you will see that the control is aligned correctly. And it works on the opposite side too. OK, so that's a brief overview of this section of the tool. Let's now look at generating ribbons from models. OK, so let's focus on this section now. I'm just going to use a basic model to demonstrate this part of the tool. But ideally, you would be working with a head model or even using this to help animate muscles. What we need to do first is define some guide edges. This will help tell the tool where to build the ribbon. OK, let's just select this edge loop here and click Outer Edges. Now let's select the loop beneath it and this time press Inner Edges. So there we have two full loops of the sphere. Let's hide this for now. All that's done is generate these curves. Now because this is a full loop, we need to check the Close the Loop box. This just helps when generating the joints and the controls so you don't end up with two in the same place. And now we just generate the ribbon. That's built the ribbon, but the model is facing the wrong way. That's not an issue really, but let's fix it anyway. Because I'm undoing, I will need to reload the UI. It's not ideal, but I will look for a better way to update it in future versions. So this time we just check flip the normal. And the ribbon is facing the right way now. Okay. We can also add controls to this ribbon too. In addition to this, we need to use the control ratio option here. This tells Maya how many controls to create. So with a setting of one, you will get a control on every joint. If we change that to three, there's now a control on every third joint. That is except here, but this is because the ribbon has an odd number of divisions, so the amount of controls doesn't fit into it perfectly. The best thing to do in this instance is experiment to see what options work best for you. So that works better, but it's maybe too many controls. Okay, let's rewind and bring the sphere back. What we can do is also generate a ribbon from a section of the model. It doesn't always need to be a loop. Let's go from here to here. That's the outer edge. And from here to here for the inner edge. I'll just hide the sphere again. So those are our guide curves. I can generate a basic ribbon from those. I can also use the matrix ribbon option too, just like before. We can even add controls. Let's try a ratio of two. 
That's okay. But we get the bunching at the end. How about three? That's better, a much nicer fit. I have an extra addition to the tool which I was working on as I was editing this video. Down here there's a new button and what this will do is convert your follicle based ribbon to a matrix based one. Now it's important to mention that this will only work with ribbons built using this tool so don't try it with any other ribbons. Although adding support for other ribbons may be something I look into in a future update. So how does it work? Let's build a basic ribbon first. I select the root joint and Y is pointing down the joint so I need to change joint orientation to Y. Let's also add controls and snap the ribbon to the selected joints. I'll add the crease to the knee too. OK, let's build that. So that's done. And we can see the follicles and joints in the outliner. Let's say I change my mind later and I need to swap the follicles for the more efficient matrix nodes. Or perhaps I'm making the move up to Maya 2020 and I want to make the rig a bit more efficient. First I need to update the name here. This is the name of the ribbon you were updating. An easy way to check is to find the follicles and copy the name at the start. Just to see what happens, let's put in the wrong name. If I click the button now, we get an error telling us the ribbon and its follicles can't be found. Let's put in the correct name now. If I click the button, it now works. If you look in the outliner, we have the new joints and the follicles have gone. They've been replaced with these, which are driven by the matrix nodes. You see, it works just the same as before. So I thought this might be useful, and it will be for me as I work on future tutorials. It means I can work on a follicle based rig, which everyone can open, but then upgrade it to a matrix based rig for people who are using Maya 2020 and newer versions. So there we go, a quick overview of version 2 of the ribbon tool. If you haven't downloaded it yet, go and grab it from one of my online stores. It will also be available to Ant CGI Club members. Just follow the link on the screen for more information. As always, I'd love feedback on this tool. What would you like adding, what works, what doesn't, and any bugs you might find. The best place to get in touch or see updates is the Ant CGI Club Twitter account. I have a lot of updates planned for the future of this tool, so make sure you head on over and follow that account just to keep updated. Well, we've come to the end of another video. Thanks for watching right to the end, and if you found this video useful, please hit that like button to show your support. While you're at it, you could also subscribe and enable notifications so you are kept up to date with future videos and community posts. If you have any questions or suggestions, please post them in the comments below or contact me through the Ant CGI Club Twitter account and I will try my best to reply. Alternatively, you could post them in the Ant CGI Club Discord server where I spend more of my time. You can find an exclusive invitation to join in the description below. Remember that you can also join the Ant CGI Club to help support future videos and tools while also earning exclusive rewards. Alternatively, if you would just like to show your appreciation, why not treat me to a coffee at my coffee page? The link is on the screen now and in the description below. Thanks again, this is Ant CGI signing off and I will see you on the next one.